Welcome to What Have You, featuring Rachel Jankovic and Rebecca Merkel. Before we get started, I wanted to remind you that now available on the Canon app are audiobooks such as Rebecca's Even Exile and Rachel's Yoo-Hoo. Don't miss out. Download the Canon app in the app store of your choice. Welcome back to What Have You. I'm Rachel Jankovic. I'm Becca Merkel. And it's a new year. It is. It is a All new All fresh, spanking, launching a decade. The time has come, the walrus said. Yep, to talk of many things. To go on a diet. How much? <laughs> How much? Actually, that's the opposite of what the walrus was doing in that poem. I know. I was <laughs> just going to say... That's not what's at all it, what happened. What's that great line in there about most of us are out of breath and, and all, all of us, us are fat? fat. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, that does sum it up. It's how I'm the feeling. season. Yep. It's the season. But plus, I was laughing with Luke that, you know, how everyone's like, wow, good thing we got the worst year oh over. And I was like, but you do know that for always, we look back on this, it'll be the 2020s. It's oh, 10 yeah. years that oh, are yeah. the 2020s. So yeah. let's not think that we've cast aside no. the aura of 2020. <laughs> I have to tell you what I've been doing okay. is trying to deal with the consequences of my past, like how I've been living for the last month. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. This brings us back uh, to Right the back to the beginning of this problem. <laughs> no, my problem has been all the parties, all of the just stuff happening and happening and happening. So yeah. things like the channel has had a lot of things Is hastily. That what you're it? The channel? Yeah, the channel. I like it. Has had a lot of things hastily stuffed in it yes. between things. And at yes. Sabbath dinner last night, nope, other before that. Yeah. Saturday a few nights ago. I opened it to get something out and to find that not only had a rolling cart full of flowers, not floral flowers, flowers like grain yeah, flowers. Okay been wrongly stuffed in the channel <laughs> but across the top of it was a vacuum lying across the top of the flower bins like you just know that things were getting a little breathy out when someone was like where should I put the vacuum on its side on top of the flower in the channel you know, you know I should say that this really killed me you already know this story but I don't think we've told it on the podcast that Ben very sweetly for Christmas. He was like, oh, we have carpet in the bedroom. I should get back a vacuum because now there's, because we have no carpet in the whole house. It's like all hard surfaces. And the thing about that, it was a great idea, except for I do have a vacuum that he had never really, <laughs> I think, with. noticed that he I He never connected it. with it. And so he calls Rachel. And he just texted me and, and said, says, you know, he said, if I was going to get back a vacuum, yeah, what would what I kind? get? So, he orders me a vacuum. I said shark. Yeah, shark. Well, mine is a shark. So, he... <laughs> I did think this was funny. I, He walked into the pantry. Where it has lived for... Forever. You know, quite some time. It's It's been there. But he obviously never stopped to drink it in. But <laughs> he walks in and he goes, what's this? And I said... <laughs> A vacuum? And he was like, what's it doing here? And I was like, it's where it goes. <laughs> and Wait, I felt ben, like it was... Are you not familiar with vacuums? <laughs> I felt like it was a real kind of a strange passing question, you know, like... And he's like, huh. And so I was like, okay. But it, it, it was the identical well, I'll tell you, vacuum. I'll tell you who now owns the vacuum that Ben bought Becca. It is, it is I. But I, I actually needed though. another vacuum because we also don't have carpet, but I vacuum all the time anyways. Right, because so I, I have area rugs. Yeah. And I also have, I vacuum the corners I and the stuff. I use it on the upholstery. Yeah. I, I do the hard parts. I want to have yeah. one upstairs and one downstairs. Yeah, smart. So I bought the extra. Yeah. But Becca, this is, <laughs> I just, while I was in the I middle. I just like the, what is this? Yeah. What's what do you call here? this? I, I think it was because he probably wondered did the vacuum arrive and I just opened it up and moved it into the pantry. But it was because it was the same one. <laughs> so I thought a real, on a real high point today while I was, 
while I was, I've been saying I probably should have planned to have like five strong men here to help me at my house and a construction dumpster for this <laughs> when the, cause the kids just went back Rachel, to school. Rachel, let me just tell you but, though, really quick. Okay. If you feel behind. Get ahead on Christmas. To get ahead on Christmas. Don't worry, I got my stocking bags ready to go, and I have something in my Amazon cart that I saw, no, and I was like, didn't. "That'd be a perfect Rachel. stocking stuffer." Becca, I'm on it. I'm I am being, on it. I'm being facetious, but you're apparently not. Okay, no, go ahead. I'm not because the more ahead I am on Christmas, the better everything is. Okay, but I have to tell you, while I was while I was dragging the kinds of things out of the channel that you wonder sure. why yeah. you ever had them in the first place. Yeah. Like stuff. I was just like, what on earth? This song comes on. Cause I was listening to the Waylon Jennings okay. and I felt like if this isn't the mood, okay, play I don't it. know what is. Do it. Let's see if I can. Oh, you're plugged into the oh, car. That's yeah. fine. Here we go. Nope. Not that. Hold that thought. Not, I, in Hold my, that thought. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go. This is mood. So you pull out the vacuum. I'm just looking at the consequences of too many parties. <laughs> Take everything that we have. <laughs> Take it. I think I will, thanks. It's a great idea. <laughs> it's like, hashtag mood. <laughs> <laughs> Take everything that we have. Take it and burn it to the ground. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I was like touched. It, I it like spoke it. to me. This yeah, song sometimes. spoke to me. Sometimes that's what you need Not to do. Not really. Just sort of. <laughs> then there, I just was amused by the... Uh, the timeliness, a it word. Was timely. It was a word it fitly spoken. Exactly, exactly. It oh, was that. Man. Mm. I don't think I could clean to that music, though. I feel like it would make me feel morose. Does it help you? Does it help you clean when you have that going? Uh, well, they're not. All of their music is not that. Mm. That was a particular downer of a song. <laughs> I was listening to an album. They sing one of my favorite songs that I just love anyways that uh, I heard that one on a playlist today and then I thought oh I should look them up and listen to more yeah. I just like them so yeah. that's why I like when my I'll be real just like I used to be probably what qualifies as an extrovert I faded on the spectrum <laughs> 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 I used to be a person who always wanted peppy music um. but like this whole le recently I have been like what about Acoustic classical guitar of some sort. Yeah, no quartet might be too busy for me to take in. <laughs> I'm like, what about one lone folk singer? One. I could listen to that. <laughs> what about? But this is when because it is balanced by the music my children are always wanting to turn on, mm. which is all the pep in your step you could ever <laughs> want. So when they're gone, I like to listen to the really I, chill. If I'm music. home in the afternoon trying to just do something like mellow, productive, you know, whatever. I feel like that's the Nora Jones moment. That's I we that's listen I to more to... Nora Jones than I <laughs> want to listen to because I only I summer often first. only summer. It's okay. her album Come Away With Me was her best that album. That was a good one. It was her best album. I like and there are good pirates. I like that one. Uh I get I get a headache part way into that album and I'm done with Interesting. her. Interesting. Nah. No that Come Away With Me was like you could listen to the whole album and enjoy it. And in fact I did back in the day. I did too, but the problem with with Nora Jones is I've heard it too many times and I'm tired yeah. of it. No, it's but true. I I listened to I had I kept turning on this like mandolin and something acoustic Christmas music and the kids were all just over and over. How about we listen to something with some words? And be like, maybe no, we will. We're gonna maybe have we one will. flute. I'm trying to not look at things like the vacuum on its side on top of the flower in the channel. So if you all could just, oh, you know, funny. we'll get there. I do like peppy music, but sometimes yeah. you just feel like it's too... Everything. I will been tell too you, afflicting you that I don't know why I just thought of this. I think I'm thinking of time in the afternoon when you're in the kitchen, just you know, like whatever. Um, 
I said not long ago on the podcast, I said I'm just not in the phase where I'm making pasta. And then you made pasta. Oh, nonstop. Yeah, just we, making the pasta. We've been making a lot of making pasta also. Making all the pasta. This morning I was about to Google up a pasta drying basket because that's what I, all the pasta grannies use. I made use. chicken lasagna with homemade lasagna yeah, that'd noodles. Be good. Mm-hmm. Stupidly good. We've been doing raviolis and fettuccinis. And, and this has nothing at all to do with the new diet program. No, that's why the new diet program. <laughs> so, what was I going to say? The oh, program. in our last episode, Jemima, we told you Jemima is a is a real resource that makes yeah. things happen. Yeah. So I enjoyed you all giving a shout out shout to out. Jemima. So here's another thing that I'd like to set the record straight. <laughs> Jemima did tell me, Lizzie, I'm pretty sure you meant Fiji water, not Fuji. And I was like... <laughs> Obviously, I did. Like I was like, sort of. She just needs to get a little closer and edit me before I make the <laughs> errors. Send it out. It's a, it's a Fuji apple. Fiji, Fiji water, water, not a Fuji. I thought there's Fuji water somewhere. Well, hard to know. Yeah. Anyways, that just to let the record show yeah. that I now know that yes, I was doing that wrong. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't catch it. I knew just what you meant. I told Becca, our our big news is that I bought a spinning wheel. So, you did? Oh, yeah. You didn't tell me that. I you didn't. told me you thought you might need one. That's where I left you. Oh, we got one. It's not here yet. Okay. It, but it'll be okay. coming. I've known for years that I a spinning wheel. I thought you already wheel. had a spinning wheel. I did once. I had one that I bought on the cheap from like, yeah, but it was that. like an old vintage uh, one that was, it just was not what I would have like it was it was like the first loom I bought where you find out that you do in fact enjoy this but that this is actually not the not the time no it's not the piece of equipment you actually want to be dealing with oh I see so I wanted I was like when I come around and doing this again yeah I'll I'll I will get a new one but then I kept delaying that because I was like you know I have enough going on have I finished all of the things I've started? No. Do I have a lot yeah. of stuff on my loom? Yes. Do I have a lot of yarn that should be knit? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do I have too many projects and quilts? Yes, yeah. I do. And so I just was kind of like, no, I'm going to hold off on the spinning wheel. Yeah. You have to draw a line somewhere. But then I undrew that line. I got out my <laughs> magic eraser. You said no. I said, never mind. I'll do no. it. No. What actually has to do with all of my four daughters being so prolific at things now that I was like, sure. we it's like buying an extracurricular activity for a little while. Let everybody mm-hmm. learn and do that. But it was about 30 minutes after I purchased this thing that we were shopping for adopting guard donkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so funny because <laughs> I I found out that it's clearly fate that one of my favorite wools is Targi which I love and I love Merino and I was like well I wonder if we should get some sheep because we do have grass like I, I have know. grass out I know there. how to shave people. I could you know, probably well I would probably I know shear the sheep for myself. that part I did specifically think of other people who I know who would have talent like that but anyways I was thinking well oh, I feel like of all the parts of taking care of a sheep shearing it I feel like I bet uh, I could do that. I bet no, I can't back on. No. shelter, clothe, and feed the sheep all year long. But I, I bet think, I could shave I it. I think you're picturing yourself tranquilizing a sheep and doing it. <laughs> because if a, if the I sheep was a not disciplined sheep, if the, <laughs> if the sheep was not on the run, I think most people could shear it. But I think that uh, there's some some livestock management skills that are involved well, in how do you get that thing down and quickly and painlessly get the job done. That, yeah. It's probably true. But you can come give it a whirl when I get my sheep. Mm-hmm. I so I was thinking, I wonder if Targi sheep grow here, like if they thrive in do our environment. Thrive? I don't know. But when I googled them up, I think when I bought Targi, I bought it I thought I bought it from some wool company that harks from Australia or something, but I don't, I don't think I did. But either way, point is I Google up Targi to find out if Targi sheep do well here. And Becca, not only they are from Idaho, the Targi sheep. They are local. They are local yokels. They were made up in Idaho in the (laughs) twenties. 
sometime, and they're named after an Idaho state park is... And I okay. thought, well, well, well it's fate. Uh, fate it. is telling me that this is what we need. And then, of course, because we do have coyotes here. Yeah. And wolves. We clearly needed to start looking into guard donkeys because <laughs> I felt like we should have a donkey out there to kick a coyote. So we've made great progress on the spinning wheel. <laughs> and let it be a lesson to us all that if you start magic erasing your lines in the sand, so sometimes... <laughs> You go shooting much Straight further than you thought. to the guard Just donkey. maybe to the moon, because we don't need a donkey. Except Are you for... going to look at donkeys, though, Rach? We did, Beck. We've looked at donkeys. Are you going to look seriously at We're donkeys? We're not going to consider really getting sheep until not the middle of winter. So until she, did you all hear that? Oh, we're for sure. Until. It's definitely on the table now as a, Rachel told me this. I was like, you get the guard donkeys. I'll just get the saffron crocus. All you all, didn't. Say yeah, I did. Me. I was like, was you, I just ignoring it's you? Like you going down your little wormhole. It ends up with guard donkeys. I will stick with just saffron crocus that I'll be out there mm. with little tweezers trying to tweeze it's a out good the idea. saffron. It's a good idea. However, I just feel like that's about as extreme sport as I'm willing to go right now. I'm not going to the guard donkeys. Well, I'll tell you something. Did I, have I said this on here before? There used know. to be a big sign at Safeway that oh, yeah. just yeah. killed me, stopped me in my tracks one time yeah. when I was heading in there. And it was, a, it was back when our biggest problems at the grocery stores was people pretending that their pets were service animals. <laughs> you remember that oh, yeah. situation oh, yeah. where people are like, what? This fleet of dogs is actually my... My support system. They're like, yeah, they, just all you got to do is put a vest partners. on them and then you take them in yeah. anywhere. Yeah. So it was in that phase where they were like, please don't have your animals in our grocery store. But there was a big sign at Safeway that said only service animals and it itemized... A and included in a real surprise <laughs> miniature horses. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like service dogs or miniature horses. Yeah. Yeah. And now I just would kill to see someone with a gar- with a miniature service horse. miniature horse mm-hmm. in the grocery mm-hmm. store. I would love it. I really would. I never. I did have to Google that up mm-hmm. to find out about how helpful is a miniature have horse. Have we ever recommended? Um, Thelwell's Pony Panorama. <laughs> I don't think because so. Because when I think about miniature horses, that's what I'm picturing is the chubby that little, little pony. Thelwell's Pony Panorama. What? Which was some kind of a British, it was a little line art, like a little comic. Yeah. But it's all these little children doing sort of like English riding on little fat ponies. <laughs> And it's sort of like fat children on fat ponies wearing sort of dressage yeah. outfits. But what happens in Th- Thelwell's <laughs> Pony? No, I was going to say, I don't nothing, remember much other no, than it being, we always just, liked the name. Well, but I always liked reading it when I was little. It's all these st- stout ponies being yeah. surly is yeah. basically what it is. It's just like a little, I think they were sort of like one panel things, sort of like, remember those old like family circus Oh, in the word, yeah. in the newspaper, I think they were a bit like. Huh. Somehow, I feel like it's in the same genre of, not necessarily funny, just a drawing. <laughs> <laughs> the Some best of them comics, are very funny. The best comics yeah. are always not necessarily funny. <laughs> um, so there was something that I was thinking of. What was it? That I was going to tell you. I'm struggling. Okay, I posted something about Bible reading and somebody commented. It just was making me think of this. Sometimes I feel like I have said this seven million times, so you hate to say these things out loud again. Okay. But then somebody tagged me in something. It was like, Rachel Jankovic, just wondering your opinion of, like, is it necessary that you have to read your Bible first thing in the morning? Like, do you believe that you have to mm. necessarily get up early and read your Bible? Or it yeah. doesn't count. I feel like of all the people in all the land who are well established in their <laughs> opinions on this matter. Like, that's the part that tickles me, is it? You think, yes, 
I have written multiple articles even about this. Who has that many opinions about this? But it, but it made me think about the fact that the new year is a great time to evaluate, like, the kinds of things that can really mess you up. And one of those that I think everybody is prone to in some way or another is perfectionism. Yeah. And it might be more like idealism. Like, yeah. it's falling into the trap of thinking. But I was just thinking we should talk about that. What are ways that I, like, having some kind of... Um, because, well, Bible reading is a clear one because if you think that the only way to be holy is to get up before the whole house is up and read your Bible, which I'll agree, that's top shelf. Yeah, I've loved nice. it when I have been able to do that. Mm-hmm. But it's what that always ends up doing is keeping you from reading your Bible some afternoon when yeah. you ha- like it. It is not actually driving just that success. It's also a lot of the time driving major failure because of. Because you have some Mm -hmm. ideal. But what are other things? Because I was going to say, dieting is clearly one. What about hospitality? Like having an idea of how good of a cook you need to be. Oh, before Before you you could ever have anybody over. Or decorating. Like, because you don't already know how to do it, you shouldn't try. (laughs) Anyways, I'm thinking New Year. This is a good time to talk about that kind of thing. Yeah. No, that's true. Are you thinking specifically on the Bible reading front? Or like... <laughs> no, that's just what prompted it for me today. Is cause, because it's sort of that Chesterton quote about anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Mm-hmm. And that anything, which is how we're always trying to encourage women in the Bible reading challenge to not act like if you're not getting out of your reading what like a you know, experienced pastor with all of his commentaries would be getting out of it that it's not worth doing. Yeah. Or, um, or like back to the hospitality thing, just because you don't know how to do it doesn't mean that you can't learn. Well, (laughs) but you certainly won't learn if you're not doing it. Yeah. So there's so many ways in which I think we have some kind of do you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe yeah. when I move into a different house, I'll bother to try to make it pretty. Right. And I think that's that's one of those things where you just have to try and troubleshoot where you are. Like, what is it exactly that's holding me up? Is it an insecurity? Is it a fear? Is it perfectionism? Is it pride? Mm-hmm. Is it... Um, and sometimes it could probably be all those things at the same time. You know, like, yeah, you want people to think you're an amazing hostess. So you're right. proud. You're insecure about the kind of hostess you actually would be. So you're insecure. You're too scared to risk anything. You're, you know, like there could yeah. be just a lot of muddle going on around the edges. But I do think sometimes just itemizing that and trying to figure out where is the sticking point for me. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like if I'm trying to come up with sort of my list of like here's the priorities or here's what I need to mm-hmm. try to move to the top of the list... If I find myself staring at one, like, where you know, like, you know the kinds of things you put it on the list, but you kind of know in your heart that you're never going to actually do it. Hmm. You put it on the list, (laughs) but you don't mean it. You know what I mean? Like, you put it on there because you have to, but... Not because you want to. Not because it's, you're going to actually make it happen. I feel like I don't know how long I have said... On my list somewhere. Like, I need to come up with a system for the laundry to work more. And it's sort of like, no, I just don't. I just didn't. I didn't, and I didn't do it again. I just keep doing the laundry in a muddly way. But, you know, like, but I keep thinking, because the laundry's a muddle... I keep putting that on the list, but then I keep not getting to it because I know that everything else—your heart, you're just like we're just gonna have Everything else will be more important than that. The fact that the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if I was gonna sit down and and be like, all right, why? Why is the laundry the one that I, the system, the laundry system? Why do I keep writing it down, but it never actually makes its way to the top? Of the yeah, pile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like, when you actually sit there and think about it, you can start saying... You know, like, you actually can start yeah. realizing... Yeah. I haven't done this yet with the laundry, so I'm thinking I, I should... I should ago, sit down and do that. Years but, ago, my big laundry breakthrough was the realization that there was never going to be a laundry breakthrough. It was always going to be needing to do it. 
Yes, but I think I'm just saying, not opposed to systems. I'm just saying. Yes. Some some things keep having the problem because they yeah. actually are just the no problem. They because are you have to thing. actually just go do yeah. it and that will solve it. But I just mean. When, when it's something like, why don't we have people over? We keep saying we should have people over, but we don't have people over. Why right. is that? Why are we I feel like, that? honestly, get out your little blank sheet of paper and start writing things down. Yeah. It's sort of like when we do, um, when we look at poems at in class, mm-hmm. and I tell the kids they need to do a close read yeah. on it. And you can sit and read a poem and look at it on the page. And there it is. You read it and you feel like you've done it. But as soon as you put your pencil on the page and you make yourself start marking it up, it's quite shocking what you'll find. Like, you start thinking... Poems are like a million times... Well, a really well-written poem. Yes. Is like... Not any poem. So many layers of... Yeah. But you start noticing, you start noticing, oh, look at that word. He repeats it three times. So you circle it each time. Yeah. And then you look at, you look at it like that and you think, oh, I did a directed study in high school with poetry of Gerard Manley Hopkins. Mm -hmm. And in those, I would do that. I'd copy the whole poem out and then I would go through and like, but the thing that really blew my mind in it Mm -hmm. was that I would look up in the dictionary words that I already knew. Yep. And found out that Gerard Manley Hopkins knew more about those words than I did because I knew what the word was enough to follow the meaning. Yep. But I did not know what the word the was. double meaning. Yes, I did not know so much yeah. of what was actually yeah. going on that made the poem so intensely beautiful yeah. and interesting. Yep. Yeah. And where you were kind of blown away that he tied those things together. Yeah. Like, it was, yeah. it was. And I know. find that until you we put just your really, pencil. Yeah, good job tying it back paper. in. Yeah. Yeah, until mm-hmm. you do that, you feel like, yeah, I read it. Yeah, I read it. I get it. Well, but or then, this is the thing when you have a problem, but the thing that insults you the most is someone proposing a solution. Yeah. That where you're like, you don't understand. I prefer this When to I be said I was having insoluble. an infestation. <laughs> Of possums. <laughs> I did not want you to talk about pest control. <laughs> I'm no, but, actually having pet possums. Yeah, see, I that's just what think, I'm having right now. I just feel like it really is worth writing down. Like, problem. We don't ever have anyone over. Why? Try writing down some reasons. Why don't paper. you have people over? It's like, maybe I'll give you some suggestions. Because I'm scared they'll see my messy house. Why mm. is my house messy? Because I spend all day long on Instagram. I think might be in those short I was few sentences. Say, you also might notice things like our kids are too badly behaved to have people right. over, and then you realize, well, perhaps yeah. the problem has been That's a different what I mean, problem. But I almost feel like yeah. it's similar to a poem where if yeah. you just start writing study. it down and and write it down. Don't just mm-hmm. because you. St- you have the thought sail away through your head and you're like, oh, hmm, and then you forget. But I don't know. I feel like it's... That's a good... It's a good... Or, like, if we don't... I don't read my Bible. Why? It's like, well, because oh, I'd man. have to think about how I need to apologize to my mom for all those if lies I, I told. Right. If I read my <laughs> Bible, what happens is it does something to me. And I was actually thinking, because a lot of people, I think, don't want... A lot of Christians don't want to read their Bible because they prefer to rely on an experiential version of God that they are able to manipulate in their own mind into sure. not minding things into God mm-hmm. would never. This is, mm-hmm. and it is a weird way of making an idol out of, yeah, out of what you say is God mm-hmm. when really what God says he is, is too confrontational. For yeah. us. Oh man, yeah. I, I told you this at Sabbath, but I thought it was really funny. When we, we got to that section of um, Isaiah a little while ago, the comfort, comfort ye, my people. Uh-huh. Speak ye comfort. Oh yeah. Um, I And it flashed back on me all of a sudden that back in the olden days when I was working at the Crisis Pregnancy Center. Somehow it was connected to this. I can't remember, but I, it was because it had something to do with a... Um, it had something to do with what someone was suggesting as a great 
encouragement to the post-abortive woman or something. So I remember it being at that time that this is connected to this. But I think it was just from the annals of smushy evangelical lifestyles. Was a Bible that was custom brewed to (laughs) to put your name in it and things. The Bible was printed like that? Yes. You just fill your name in? Well, or they do it for you. It's really a oh, deep evil, no. actually. It's pretty hilarious, though. That's awful. Yeah, but it was that passage that was, it's comfort, uh, because it, I remember the little section of, that was like the sample that it was saying, like, <laughs> tell Charlene that her warfare is over. Oh. <laughs> Her iniquitous oh. part. <laughs> oh, sometimes, sometimes people do embarrassing I, things. But the thing is, and this is what I really keep coming back to and wondering about. It just hit me all of a sudden when I was, because I was listening to the reading when it did that section, and I just had this weird flashback of like, oh my word, dude, like, oh, that's right. Speak ye comfort to Charlene and tell her that her <laughs> warfare is ended. And I was had a little moment of shock and awe remembering that. <laughs> but then as it kept going, I started really getting the giggles because, okay, maybe it's Isaiah 40. Is that where it is? I'm like, let's see. Um, it got, it just keeps going and it's terrible because, <laughs> because... I think it was more than... I'm pretty sure it was like a significant portion of scripture that they were offering to just slap your name into. <laughs> taking it wildly out of context. But it but it struck me as so funny because as that passage went on, if you were throwing someone's name in it, the Bible would be more brutal than... <laughs> than any... Because, like, it really doesn't... Uh, you know, the Bible does not actually... There's a lot of talk of everyone will see your shame. Oh, it was Isaiah 40. Weirdly, I was like, it doesn't look like Isaiah. And it was, uh, still had me in Matthew. Oh. But, comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Charlene and cry to her that her warfare is ended and her iniquity is pardoned, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness. Okay, but it keeps going, and there's a lot of... The grass withers, the flower fades. And I just think, like, Charlene withers, Charlene fades. (laughs) But the word of the Lord is forever. And, I mean, it goes on. There's a lot of things, like... Like a brood of vipers or something. Yeah. Like, like yeah. there's a lot of direct yeah. things. I'm oh, like, yeah. you know, the Bible would be brutal if you were slapping your name yeah. in there in all You'd the places. You have to be real careful about where you put your own promises. <laughs> because there's a lot of promise of <laughs> no, shame and doom. And, I know. And, or uh, just, it just seems like a deeply risky business <laughs> to start getting into that kind of a thing. <laughs> but it, it's, that also is interesting because so many people read scripture looking for that kind of a direct message to them yeah and sometimes well it's uh, obviously uh, the scripture whatever you're reading feels incredibly personal well i want to just say that that passage is totally relevant to a post-abortive woman like it's because what god is saying to israel is what god is saying to those he loves and his people it's not something that you can't apply it to your own problem or be comforted in your own problem but just probably shouldn't go so far as to dabble do in the (laughs) in the text and put your name in there (laughs) i just thought amazing but yeah if you're looking for that kind of thing i could see yes sitting down and just reading the bible could be somewhat of a thwart because well, you wouldn't be finding... Well, you'd be like, all of the history no. has nothing at all to do with Encouraging me. Encouraging for me today. Yeah. I am not uplifted. Yeah, and it's easier to just read the verse on your calendar and feel like it's speaking to you. Well, because than... because they do those things, or that's like Googling, encouraging Bible yeah. verses. Right. Yeah. Most of the time, encouraging Bible verses are embedded in the middle... Of a lot of a lot of other, other stuff, things yeah. that you needed to get to, <laughs> like I've always loved in First Corinthians fifteen is like a hugely 
it's like a major discussion of the resurrection and why the re- mm-hmm. resurrection is so important. Right. And then it's all the way, all the way at the end. Like, it's not a little section. It is a theologically rich, I'm going to look up the passage. It's a theologically intense, uh, come on, help me out here. Look at this. Now it's saying 1 Corinthians 15 is comfort for God, uh, comfort, comfort you, my people. Yeah, weird. Not helpful. No. Of my Bible app is not staying with me and where I'm jumping. I'm like, let's go to First Corinthians fifteen and it's not helping me. Okay, hold on. I'll try again. Wow. I'm really struggling here. First Corinthians fifteen. Yeah, you got it now. No, I don't. That's Isaiah 41. Oh. Hmm. Failure. Well, yeah. Failure. No, I just think... Um, I'm going to close that app and see if I can... Circling back around to analyzing hang-ups. I think that that is a very useful uh, thing to do right now because everybody is trying to start fresh. And they are trying to... You know, it's a great time to take stock and, you know... You, we totally. finally made it through the year, we made it through the holidays, and now we're going to try to, like, freshen up and rearrange the furniture. Get and that vacuum out of there. Get that, you know, cleaning up done. And I feel like that's true in all the areas of your life. So if there is a place where you stick, I think now's a great time to roll up your sleeves and try to figure out why am I sticking right there. And Another thing is that to remember the principle of work expands to the time you allow it. Yeah. I remember or in our pretty early marriage that I was blown away by this idea. I'm really it's like I yeah. really can't get to first Corinthians fifteen. No, I think probably has spoken. Uh, it seems odd of the Holy Spirit to interfere with this particular <laughs> Anyways, effort. go ahead. Uh, I just remember I had to clean out our closet and it was like that's gonna be a big to do because I probably have to probably have to take things to the dry cleaner and I'm going to have yeah. to sew buttons on some stuff and I'm going to need to <laughs> iron 10 hundred million things and so consequently the closet is instead going to just be an explosion of train wreck yeah. and I'm like I'm going to have to book like an entire day yeah. for it and then for some reason I didn't have a whole day and I was like what if I just set the timer for 15 minutes and I did what I can do in the closet right in 15 minutes and you know what was a surprise <laughs> the closet could be clean in 15 minutes <laughs> like no I had not done yeah. all of the extra yeah. depth I had not like redone everything but I had surprisingly well able there are to do there most are sometimes where there's a job that you're legitimately you've got some stuff that needs to be sorted out. Like you need Mm -hmm. to do some soul searching and some confessing in order to be able to adequately get to that job. Like that's a thing that happens, but other times you kind of dread it and you don't want to start it and it's just a pain. Mm -hmm. But when you actually decide to grit your teeth and roll up your sleeves and just do it, it turns out to be actually just totally fine and fun and it's not a problem. And yeah, totally. Actually I needed to clean out the drunk drawer and it turned out not to be that bad. Right. Like why did I let that, why did I let that be the thing? Okay. It finally worked for me. So I'm going to tell you my point because it was a good point. I promise. Which is a, so it's a long chapter. It's like the final verse is 58. So it's a long chapter of all about the resurrection and the importance of the, of the resurrection. But the very final verse is, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor is not in vain. And as Dad always says, with any verse that starts out, Therefore, what's the therefore, therefore? (laughs) And like, if you just lift an encouraging, you lift just an encouraging verse out of context, it's like, stand fast. But we're not going to bother to read everything about what exactly the (laughs) resurrection means. Well, then you have no therefore. Like when when you get to that, it's saying because you have heard and believed all of this. Yeah. 
this is why you can know that your work is not in vain. Right. And I think, and it's funny because just, it's like the difference between wanting to really heal a wound lightly, like, oh, what you're doing matters. But instead of actually having it all the way planted in the fact that Jesus died and rose again, and that's why your work matters. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a while to get to that, to tell you that, but the, my point is just read it in context. Yes. And get, and don't, yeah. And follow the train of thought because the, we're trying the authors, but don't, of scripture, if you can't follow the train of thought, don't let that keep you from. No, but beginning. I'm just saying the authors of scripture did not in fact put their pencil down and stick it away at the chapter break. Oftentimes, it's remarkable how well it's they flow. The, it's the same thought, and there were no chapter breaks yeah, originally. Exactly. So, so there's that. But we do tend to read them as kind of like totally discrete episodes that have right. no context around. We're them, like stopping of. there. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. We just we just think that's break of thought, but sometimes it super isn't one. Yeah. And you wonder why they did that in the first place if they just picked a middle spot. A lot of the time it is like a clear turn of like a different thing is happening yeah. now. But there's times when it isn't. Yeah. And any chapter that begins with therefore. But I do think on your list of like, okay, so where are the places that people could stick? So Bible reading, obviously, we've talked about that quite a lot. Um, entertaining, what were you saying? Decorating. I yeah, think like that decorating, that like, I'm afraid to try because I'm not good at this. So until I spontaneously combust in a lot of money or, oh, I had a thought about decorating. What? Lately. So I was just thinking about how Christians are living a completely different kind of life. And right now in the world, I feel like that contrast has been heightened really, yeah. really quickly. Yeah. And where you were living a life not very long ago that was uh, didn't necessarily signal to everyone yeah, Christian sure. here, you know, believer. Yeah. Because there were a lot of other people also who were married to men and had some children. Right. Like, you know, but as time goes on, like, this is getting more and more bizarre that right. you're like, you feel like you're in the same place, but it's getting more and more bizarre. One of those other things is having a happy home, having people in a home mm-hmm. with joy, with somebody cooking with things like having a happy home is getting remarkably more obvious or rarer, you know, like, yep. like this is a thing. And yep. with the weird COVID restrictions and everything, I feel like it's giving everyone a chance to really notice that they don't have that because they're stuck at home. And then instead of like Uh going, you know, whatever they were doing to kind of keep from noticing that this is a time that's like making everyone see that all of this is to say, I was thinking about homes and how you want your home to be inviting and beautiful and warm and Mm -hmm. a nice place to be for your own family, but how it, I was thinking about how different that is from, like, just having tons of money and making it yeah. all. Like, hiring, hiring a decorator because yeah. you have enough money to make it a pleasant place mm-hmm. is very different than caring because this is your duty. You know, this is a thing you care about. But it was striking me that, like, an essential component of Christian decorating is contentment. And that contentment is like the thing you can't, it's the thing that is the intangible difference between assembling Mm -hmm. all the things in a place Mm -hmm. that should look good and, and then that, do you know what I'm talking about? Like that, that intangible difference between. And I think what you're talking about is (coughs) contentment as it shows up in all the details, not contentment as it is. When you stencil it on the wall, whereas like Where contentment, you say contentment, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it yes, actually, no. you, I think that's okay. One like of those... say you have a ratty old couch because yeah. you can't afford a new couch. Yeah. I think the difference there is just deciding to live a ratty life mm-hmm. or being the people who somebody who cares to try to make it look cared for, even though it is not magnificent. Like, sure. not letting it be just dirty or, like, so, you know, like, 
it doesn't have to be the finest furniture to tell that someone cared for it and yeah. and the loved person on it. Who sewed cheerful cushions to throw on it. Yeah, or, or puts a little blanket folded up over the arm of it, or has yeah. a lamp beside or it, or has to sew a slip cover out of a random old. You find know, a whatever. way, yeah. yeah and I, there's a real difference there, but I was gonna say I think that that's kind of the heart of the difference between like decorating versus loving people through your work and and loving the Lord through your contentment with what He's given you and your delight in what He's given you. You know, like stewarding it well, doing what you can, right. but not because you're trying to win a Pinterest no competition no. of some kind and. And I feel like trying to learn more and practice more and get better at is something that you can feel like you're doing it if you're looking at pictures of other people doing it. And that Uh is not the same, you know. It's funny how... But that's part of the reason I think I said that about contentment is not that you don't. Because, of course, you buy things and there's nothing wrong with having money to spend on decorating either. I'm I'm talking about the... The difference of, oh, I don't even know how to, I think of what you were just talking about looking at things. If you're thinking, oh, I wish I could just buy all these Joanna Gaines things. Like, if, I, if only I could just buy the kit. Yeah, if I just buy this and put this yeah. in here, then this would be, then this would express like a Christian. But I think, I think that, um, that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with essentially buying the kit. You know what I mean? Like you bought the pretty stuff and you put it together in a very predictable way. But I no, in a way that just looks like Joanna Gaines did it or whatever. But I think that there's something really beautiful about women who actually get good at it themselves. Where you can see their personality and their life in their home. And that's how you build a culture. It's like when you have people who are actually expressing what God has given to them and getting good at it. It's like them hitting their note on their instrument in the orchestra as opposed to, oh, everybody's doing this right now, so I'm going to do it right now too. Or like that there's only one kind of homemaker. There's only one way that a home should be. Or that there's only one. And you... And, and there's this funny, I think, like, since, um, well, really, since sort of the 50s suburbia, where really everybody was trying to look just like the neighbors. Yeah. Where you did They really want, liked that. They did. They really liked it. And there is a Weirdly, funny, deeper still, streak in of Americans and that I think still does this. I was going to say, there are times when everything I see on Instagram is rose gold same. and yep. like the most predictable thing ever. Yeah. Like I've yeah. seen this 10 hundred billion times. And you times. can't escape the moment that you're in. And of course, you know, the moment that you're in is going to affect how you see things and what you admire right. and everything yeah. else. But so it's nothing wrong with having different fashions or trends or whatever. But I do think that Christian women like sure as a starting point, great by the by the thing, but I think it would be lovely if women were all rather than trying to all look as if it came out of the pottery barn showroom piece mm-hmm. if it actually looked like them if I'll it tell actually you, looked like I'll their tell you, family I'll tell you a thing that's funny about that is that it happens often to me that I like something and I'm like this gives me joy but then I'm also like what does that mean why do I like this yeah because it's not cool to like this. Like, this is not a cool item. There's no, Nobody no. is telling me that this is the way I should go. Yeah. So when that happens, I think if you're really insecure about it, you don't just do it. Because, like, say that you are, like, I don't know, say you're at a thrift store. And there's some funny object there that you're like, I like this. Or this is funny. Or, like, this plant yeah. stand yeah. Has something going for it. But you then do a scan and think none of my friends would put this in their house. Right. So you're like, well, I can't because that would not <laughs> yeah. be accepted. Right? Like this would yeah. not be, this is not traditional ways to behave. Right. And I think that it, it does take 
the courage of not doing it to impress everybody else, right? Like, that the point is just, like, to be vulnerable enough to let people see things that just floated your boat. Right. Is actually really, that's a different thing. It really is harder in a weird way. And I or always in moments. think it's fun when you are, like, in a house that's totally crazy and different than your own and it's unique and everything. You really enjoy looking around at it. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, that's quirky. I wonder why she would put that there or whatever. Yes. It makes you yeah. think about it. And I feel like you you see more of the person than if you're in a very generic this just looks like what everybody does right now because that's what yeah. we do is we do rose well, gold Well, I think it's kind whatever. of, but that's part of what I was saying when I was trying to say, I think that the magic ingredient is contentment mm-hmm. because I think that sometimes you like something that is not what other, like, you know, people will not think that that's a mm-hmm. remarkable choice that you've made. Right. But you're content with the fact that this gives me joy. Like, this is a fun thing, so I'm going to do it because I'm a gonna. (laughs) You know, like, this is something that I love, or I... And all of this is just to say, I think that as we go about... I mean, I hope everybody's cleaning their houses out and settling in. for. You know, you're getting your Christmas decor down and you're moving Mm -hmm. forward. And I just think the Christian home is going to be... The importance of the Christian home yeah. is going way, way, way up right and, now. And I think that women are so central to that. But them actually, like, basically get your roots down deep in terms mm-hmm. of, like, you're settled here and you're going to get good at it and you're going to thrive here and you're going to really make the most of it. And you want to raise you... And you want to raise your daughters to think yeah. that this is interesting Worth doing, worth pursuing, and something that takes effort and yeah. thought and energy. And something you're never going to master before you're dead. I mean, if no, you've I mean, mastered think how long it, it's gonna take then you have a out. very tiny Shearing scope. Shearing sheep. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I think that that's how you build a culture, is women who are willing to do that part. Because when you think about regional cuisines or whatever, I think we do tend to want to have um, everything easy. You know, you can just buy that frozen mm-hmm. dinner. You can just buy that pre-made whatever. You yep. can just... And and it tastes the same whatever wherever you are in the mm-hmm. country. You can get it exactly the same. The living rooms look the same. Everything's the same. And I do think it's... There's so much scope for women to try to branch out. And even if it's a real bad bomb... At least you try. I've done a lot of those. Oh yeah, so many, many that you're like, please so get this out of my sight. What happened there? That was get embarrassing. Get this out of my. But sight. at least then you've learned something and you've had a laugh, and then you can and maybe a cry, and then you're in. <laughs> you can push forward. Moving on, moving on. <laughs> yes, totally. So I would just say, I, wherever you are, whatever you're working on, think of it in terms of your home is more important than it's ever been. And learn more. Learn yes. more about it. And roll your sleeves up and get more involved. about it through other places that you wouldn't have thought of. Like, that's hard. How do you do that? Like, I, do, I was wondering. <laughs> no, find I just the mean, resource you can't think of. Look <laughs> further than what just happens to be in your own mall in your town. You know, like research further, look around, see what things are out there. I feel like it's always so interesting when I discover I think it's important a on person, that. you know, I don't know, growing orchids somewhere. I think and it's important to not get to, um, like, don't dismiss something because you saw something you don't like. What I mean is many people go for, I'll only shop in this particular place but one of the things I most love about thrifting is that you have this you are shopping everywhere in all decades at one yeah. time like you mm-hmm. really are there's a much vaster you have to hone your eye you're actually. like you do because yeah. you can get just overwhelmed because when I you think first... that people can do the thing where it's like okay I know that Pottery Barn makes pretty stuff and yeah. here it is and so if I buy it it's respectable it mm-hmm. will go in my house and, and it's okay because it says Pottery Barn on the yeah. sticker on the bottom but when you're in goodwill, you can't possibly trust it in that way. No. You can't just assume that if you take it home, the public will admire it. <laughs> no. 
there are no guarantees there. You you end up. I I told you. I'm sure I said this on the podcast. I was so pleased a long time ago when I was at the Hope Center, which just always marks up their goods. When they know what they have, they mark it up really high. Yeah. They are not thrifty on that. So I was like leaving a room that was full of grody furniture. Like mm-hmm. nothing cute in there at all. And all the way across the room I was like, that pillow is kind of cute though. And I went over there and it was in fact very cute. Yeah. And they were, however the Hope Center does it so it comes out without tax. The pillows were like a dollar ninety seven each or something. Like it must be their, um, it must be their price they're just yeah. what they do for nasty throw pillows. Yeah. But it was, instead of a nasty throw pillow, it was three, like, brand new Mari Meko crate and barrel, like, down-filled, mm, big, beautiful yeah. pillows. And I continue to be delighted by those. <laughs> like, not just because it only cost yeah. me $6 to get them, yeah. but because I would never have bought them full price. Yeah. I would never have ordered that yeah. from Crate and Barrel yeah. for that price. But when I found them, I'm like, this is my favorite thing ever, and I will make this work in my living room. Oh, I know. Room. And yeah. I grabbed a vase one time at a jumble sale place in England that was like, oh, it's a pretty white vase. I'll just grab that. It was like a pound, and so it was a pretty shape, whatever. And it is like... A lovely old Wedgwood vase that is so pretty, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. you find those mm-hmm. those good little objects here and there, but it's not the same as when you just know that everyone will think this it's cute safe. because it came from yeah the safe place. And I I don't know. I think there's so much room for women to I don't know just hunt I think, around I think in it's the bushes have a little more bit fun. more. Yes. Like, yes. we can have more fun with what we're doing. Also, we're going overtime, we and are. I need to pick up my kids. We so we, we should too. probably stop that. We should. But, guys, here's our tip. Look further. One time, we had a book in our youth that was called The Frugal Mind. <laughs> and I'm sure we've talked about it. She told us to spray paint noodles and put them in jars for decoration. Yeah, she did. And I'd like to tell you, look further than you thought, but not that far. <laughs> I would say look further than spray painted noodles. I, I would say, say stop before you're just spray painting noodles. <laughs> but do try. <laughs> we used to read that book aloud to but each other just for giggles. If they're homemade noodles. Well, you might have some of those lying around now that you're on your diet. So spray painting them might be the best way to keep away exactly. from them. All right. Until next time. Have a good week. Bye-bye.